Hey guys, I pr thank you for joining me today. I know it's early. Thank you for... Hold on a second. Sorry. Um, I don't know what happened there, but something happened there. Something popped up on my screen and started uh, going. Hi, guys, again. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I just, you know, I love music. And usually, um, quite often when a sermon comes to me, it um, starts with a song. And this song uh, came to me by Faith Hill um, called It Matters to Me. And I remember doing this song when I used to add music to my sermons. Um, um, years ago, years ago when I used to have music and then a sermon um so and this song pops in my head and i was like well i already did that but the lord said to me i want you to to um have a different take on it before you talked about non-verbal and verbal communication um and now I just want you to talk about my relationship with my children. And I want you to tell them it matters to me when, when, when I wake them up in the morning and it feels like it's only just me and it feels like I I give them so much, and I still love, tell them that I still love them, but tell them that I, I don't need their relationship, but I want their relationship. She sa he says, Rachel, tell them that I want their relationship, um, and he he desperately wants to have an ongoing um, spiritual connection with his children. And that's what he's crying out for right now. Um, he put it to me this way a few years ago. He said to the, to the women, he said, to me as a woman, he said, what would it feel like if you know your husband loves you, but he never says that, or you know that your boyfriend loves you or cares about you, but he never says it? And I said, Lord, that would feel awful. Like, he never says he loves me and I do all this stuff. And he said, that's how I feel. Um... He said, the, the, the Lord said to me, I don't need them. I don't need them to be God, but I want them. I want my, my bride so bad. And he's saying, I want a relationship with my bride, a real relationship with my bride. I was reading, <laughs> uh, this is so funny, um, this is kind of um, embarrassing to read this because to say this but because this is not a, um, a Christian novel at all but 
I like um I like romantic novels and um I just finished reading um a novel called Mirror Image um by uh Daniel Steele. Um and this novel is about twin identical twins that lived in the it's fiction but it's about identical twins that lived in the fifth in the nineteen in the early nineteen hundreds before World War One. And they were totally identical. Identical dress, everything identical. And one sister was wild as any, was kind of adventurous and kind of loved adventure. And kind of loved the ch a challenge. She was into women's lib and would go to all these marches and would do all this stuff. And the other sister would be was more quieter and would like to stay with her father and looked well to her house and did what women were supposed to do in that time. So one sister, the adventurous sister that liked to cause mischief, got herself involved with a with um, a married man. And then she got pregnant um, by this married man, um, and she she eventually sadly miscarried this married man's baby. And her father was so upset that he made her marry his lawyer which is someone that she didn't love. His lawyer had lost his wife in the Titanic. And, um, and his lawyer had a son, and the son needed a mother. And so, um, so they got married. Uh, the adventurous sister and the lawyer got married. And then when they got married, they were so different that it didn't work at all. They tried and they tried and they tried and they tried. And they just couldn't connect because she had issues with men. She had issues with herself. She, it, they were just too different. They could, couldn't connect. So, long story short, she just, they tried and tried and tried and tried, and eventually she asked her sister, uh, her identical twin, to switch with her. And the, because, and then she went off to Europe to help in the war by then. Um, so she she went off, left her sister with her hus husband, but her sister had a total, totally different personality. And her sister was kind and gentle and just totally, um, she was an amazing woman. And um, the husband began to really fall in love with her sister, but he thought it was his wife. So, um, so, the, the husband began to fall in love with the sister and um, it, it came to pass now that in Europe the sister got hurt and 
they went to see the husband and the, the sister went to see the identical twin who got hurt. And uh, they told him the truth and blah, blah, blah. And everything turned out all right. And basically, the funny thing the Lord's telling me to ask you is, which sister are you? Like, he he said, you were on fire and and adventurous and and on fire for me, but but now you're just kind of going to church online, and you've stopped reading your word, and you've stopped uh, reading your Bible, you've just, the adventure has stopped, Uh, the kindness has stopped, the the love has stopped and one day I wake up one day um, he, he is touching one person which is the person that is totally on fire for God the person that is totally um, in tune with God is reading the word is in fellowship with God and the next day the person, the same identical person doesn't want anything to do with God. So he said, which person are you? Actually, I shouldn't say exactly what he said. He said, which person am I sleeping with at at one particular time? Um, Which person is in relationship with me. He's like, you've been two different people for so long. He said, where is the authentic you? He said, unlike these sisters, there's only one of you, but like these sisters, it's almost two different uh, personalities. He said, "There's, there's one personality that's loving and kind, and on fire for me and there's another person who is cold and who just wants and wants from me he's saying which person are you he's saying i want that first person back i want the person who's been on fire for me i want the person who was in love with me but it, se- it seems like now we don't even talk to each other. You just read three scriptures or however many scriptures in your Bible plan and think that's enough. He's like, that is not enough. He said, I need authenticity. He's like, I need my girl back. He's like, where is my girl? He's like, you keep showing up to your friends, even in your e-group or cell group or whatever, um, showing up that you know certain things when I don't have a relationship with you, with you. We haven't talked. We haven't touched. You haven't um, really tried to get to know what I've been doing in your life. You haven't been listening to me. You've been following somebody else's Bible reading plan. You've been not really getting to know me. He's like, for this next season, the first start of of your purpose and getting to know your purpose is getting to know me. And I'm not saying to, you know, neglect everything and just go like a monk. But he just wants to know you, beloved. He wants to commune with you. He wants to, to, um, for you to pray in your own words. 
Stop praying in a way that you think you should pray. Oh God, our Father in heaven, we come to you, thy today. He said, stop all that horse poop. He's like, I need you. He's like, I want to show you what I'm doing in the earth. He's like, I want to reveal to you my secrets. But there's no one there for me to reveal it to because it's not the real you. He's like, I'm desperate to find the real you. The real you is somewhere there. And I can't find him or her. And he's like, I know you're afraid, but daughter, son, I know you, and I love you. And he's saying, please, I just want a relationship with you. He's like, it matters to me. It matters when you just brush me off with a three scripture and, you know, you teach your kids to pray the Our Father, but it's not real. He's like, I need the real you. I need to see the real you. I know you inside and out, but I need to see the real you. And whatever issues you're dealing with, I can help you with them. I can set people. Um, I can set people around you to help you with them, but I need to see the real you. I need you to come to me with all your your crap, with all you, with all you are, with all the good stuff too. I want to celebrate with you. I want to watch movies with you. I want to be able to reveal my secrets to you. But I can't reveal my secrets to, 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 uh, to an imposter. He's like, I refuse to reveal my secrets to an imposter. He's like, I need the real you. And when you take off that churchy mask that you've been wearing for 10 or 20 years, he's like, I can deal with whatever I need to deal with, whatever sin I need to deal with, whatever thing I need to deal with. And the thing with God is he will deal with you on a level that you can handle. He will He will walk with you. He will put people in your life that will help you deal with whatever on a level you can handle. You don't need to be afraid of yourself. You don't need to be afraid that he won't like you. You don't need to be afraid that he won't accept you because you are accepted in the, the beloved and you are liked and you are loved. Well, some people would say, uh, he, do, he, he loves me but he doesn't like, like me. Well, I'm saying he likes you, beloved. He likes you. He knows the bad stuff you've done. He knows who you are, and he wants that person. He doesn't want to just be in a relationship with you to clean you up and just leave you there. He wants to be in a relationship with you because he wants to laugh. Um, he wants to laugh at what you laugh at. He wants to share things with you. He wants to be worried about those children with you. He wants to um, be in relationship with you and give you solutions to the things you're worried about. He wants you, he wants to unlock doors uh, to communication with your husband. He wants to be in relationship with you. He wants to help you through your life circumstances. Um, and he's saying, please, I need to be in relationship with you. You're my daughter. You're my son. And I love you. He's saying, I love you and I like you. And I'm so desperate to be in relationship with you. Uh, and you asked me, Rachel, how do I, 
uh, how am I supposed to be in this kind of relationship with God? Well, just start talking. Just start pouring your heart out to Him. And not in a specific way. Just do it how you do it. Your personality, your way, your bent. And if you want Him to show you just say, God, I don't know how to do this. I want to do it the way Rachel, uh, Rachel said, but I don't know how to do it. And he'll show you your specific way of communicating with him. Uh, the funny thing about God, you would, you would uh, have different uh, people say different things about how to get a uh, closer relationship with God. Some people say read your Bible. Some people say worship. Some people say, you know, different things. Some people say get in community with others. And all that is true. But for me, getting into relationship with God means just um, discovering how he communicates with me, how he talks to me, how he um, communes with me. Some people, it's in groups. Some people, it's through friends. Some people, it's through solitude. Some people, it's through sermons. Some people, it's audibly. Some people, it's through dreams and visions. So I would say there is no one formula in getting in relationship with God. The first thing you need to do is ask him. And he wants me to say one last thing. Uh, um, salvation is free. Um, the gift of salvation is free. But the relationship takes work. Salvation is free. It's just basically um, believing in your heart that Jesus is Lord and that he rose from the dead. But a relationship with God takes work. A daily relationship with God takes work. Like any relationship. Now, I'm not married, but I've had friends, I've had parents, and those relationships take work. You don't just um, get, into relation, get into relationship with someone like that. It takes work, it takes communication, it takes time. But I'm telling you that that relationship with God is worth it. It's worth the time. It's worth um, the work. It's worth what you put into it because you get so much out of it beyond your understanding. And a lot of people say, well, I can't do the hour a day or whatever, but ask how to incorporate it incorporate the relationship with God in your schedule. And it's not that he works with your schedule, uh, but but he just because he knows you and he knows you have kids or he knows you have a job or he knows uh, for, for us with disabilities living in the kind of care, he knows you have bo bookings, he knows, he knows whatever. And and it's amazing that he'll work with your personality, your particular bent, and your schedule. Or he'll show you how to adapt your schedule to, to form a relationship with him. And you'll, you'll be surprised once you're submitted and once you truly want a relationship with God, Things will, st the desire will be there, and you'll form certain habits according to uh, your life and how you live and 
what you do. So there is no specific formula for a relationship with God. It depends on the individual individuality of, of his children. And and he loves individuality. And he doesn't change your personality when you once you get in relationship with it. He uses your personality to enhance his kingdom because he gave you your personality. So the fact you have to give up your personality, you don't have to give up anything. You may have to work on some things, but even that, he'll help you through that. He'll put people around you to help you and to, and to really guide you. Or he'll put books in your face in your way or he'll use sermons whatever he needs to do the the myriad of ways god communicates with you are as varied as his people are the the mir the myriad of ways that god communicates with you are as varied as his people are so for me, he knows I love music, but he knows reading, reading a book for me is hard, but because of my disability and my, my hands. So he often communicates with me uh, through music, whether it be uh, Christian music, but he often uses uh, secular music um, for to communicate with me. I, I remember one time I was just minding my own business and I was listening to Justin Timberlake's uh, song called Mirrors and I was listening to that da, 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 da. And I began to uh, see Genesis 3 about being God's image, and he started to speak to me, and through that, uh, the sermon, We Are God's Mirrors, which is now on YouTube, it's been on YouTube for a couple of years, um, came, came about. See, once you're submitted to God, he'll work with you to, to do the rest when it comes to purpose, when it comes to uh, if, if or if not, you should get married. Uh, you know, he'll work with you. But a lot of people are saved but not submitted. So he doesn't want you to just believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. That's salvation. But submission is a different story. Submission is when you lay down your will and pick up his. Let me, let me say that again. Submission is when you lay down your will and pick up his. So as I was saying a few weeks ago, to, to submit would mean to stand under a mission. And so you lay down your mission and pick up his mission. So you submit, so you're under him and he's he's not a tyrant he leads with love he doesn't lead with an iron fist he'll lead you with love he knows the pressure to put on you he knows what you can handle he knows the trials he has to take you through to get out what he needs from you he knows your bent, he knows your personality, and he knows where you're taking to, 
where he's taking you to or where you're going. So don't be afraid to submit. Don't be afraid to stand under, to lay down your mission and stand under his because his mission will take you to far greater places than yours ever could. So guys, thank you for listening to me today. Sorry for what happened at the beginning. Um, I hope you're doing okay. So share this if you if it blessed you and you think that someone can be blessed by it. Share it by all means. Share it and and I will talk to you later. When we don't talk, when we don't touch, when it doesn't feel like we're even in love, it matters to me. When I don't know what to say, don't know what to do, don't know if it really even matters to you. How can I make you see that it matters to me? Bye, guys. I'll see you later. Hi, Robert. Hi, David. How are you? See you guys later. When we don't talk, when we don't touch, when it doesn't feel like we're even in love, it matters to me. When I don't know what to say, don't know what to do, don't know if it really even matters to you. How can I make you see that it matters to me? Bye, guys. I'll see you later.